Hey everybody, welcome back to Lionheart Ministries. I am Scott Jansen and today I'm excited to share with you this message called Hidden Treasures. Now, How many of you grew up treasure hunters? Now I'm not talking about real treasure hunters, but you know, as a child, maybe you were the kind of person that went out looking for treasure. Maybe in your backyard, maybe in the forest, you know, down the street. Wherever it was, you were always searching for that amazing treasure. And I was like that. I mean, I watched Indiana Jones. I was hoping to find the Holy Grail somewhere in my city. But we all know that that doesn't typically happen. But there are treasures out there as well, spiritually speaking, that are worth far more than any earthly treasure that we could find. That's what I want to talk about today. And uh, I want to start with a story. There was a deep sea diving expedition that they did. And uh, it was a Florida-based organization uh, called Odyssey Marine Exploration Incorporated. And uh, they found an amazing discovery in Portugal. And it was a lost wreck of a 19th century Spanish galleon that sunk in 1804. And the find was amazing. It was airlifted to the U.S. And the coins that they found in the ship were worth over $500 million. So that's a pretty good find. And that's very rare to find something like that. And they would use these deep sea uh, robots, remote control, to go in there and to search down 1,100 meters under the water. Um... There's also another guy in, uh, and this is in North Carolina. There's a guy named James Hill. And he, he was able to find in his own family property uh, emeralds that weighed 3,300 carats. I mean, some of the best quality emeralds, they said, in North America that they've ever seen. 3,300 carats. Now, a typical wedding ring is about one quarter or one half of a carat. So this find was millions and millions of dollars. So like I said, these things are very rare, but there are real treasure hunters out there that go out and find these things. But we as children of God have treasures that we can find too. Spiritual treasures that are absolutely amazing. And I want to talk about that today. You know, there's a parable that Jesus teaches that teaches us how much the kingdom of God is worth. And it's worth far more than any kind of ruby or emerald or anything that we could find. There are amazing treasures that we can find if we're willing to search for them. Matthew 13, 44 to 46. So the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So this is an interesting comparison. We're not sure what this man was doing in somebody else's field. Maybe he was hired helper. I'm talking about the first guy who, you know, maybe he was a hired helper who, of the guy that owned the field. Maybe he was just passing through. Or maybe the field was for sale and the man was looking it over before he was deciding whether or not to buy it. Whatever the reason was that he was there, he found an amazing treasure, maybe similar to the emeralds, something that was worth far more than the property itself. So this was a great surprise for him because instantly this man knew that this treasure had incredible value. And so he was willing to give everything he had. He was so full of joy over his discoveries. He went home, he sold everything he owned his house, his furniture, 
everything. He sold everything that he had. His jewelry, his sheep, his goats. And then he took all that money that he had made and he bought that field. Clearly, the treasure in that field was worth more than everything else that that man owned. And Jesus is saying, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Everything you own, you need to give up in order to receive something of far greater value. Because I'll tell you right now, your soul is worth more than anything that you can gain on this earth. That's why we need to surrender and to give up. Give up ourselves. So when the man found the treasure, it says that, uh, you know, he... He, he gave everything. And when's the last time that you can say that you gave everything that you have in exchange for what Jesus could give you? You see, this man, when he found the treasure, he could have covered the back up, gone about his business, and forgotten all about it. But that's not what he did. The treasure was too great to forget about. The man was so excited that he had to own that treasure. And he was left with what? Nothing. Nothing but the treasure. But you know, he knew that the treasure was better than his home, than his belongings, than everything that he had. The treasure was so important to him that he joyfully gave up everything else in order to gain the treasure. And Jesus, you know, he began the story with the kingdom of heaven is like. So let's talk about the kingdom of heaven for a minute. Or the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is wherever the will of God is done. The kingdom of God is wherever the will of God is done. Because each of us sins, none of us can do the perfect will of God before we're born again. On our own, what can we do? On our own, we cannot be part of God's kingdom, but Jesus and this is the wonderful part. Jesus came to make the kingdom available to everyone who would receive it. What an amazing gift. Jesus takes away, this, takes away the sin of everyone who trusts in him. The person has a change of heart. And they want to do God's will. And by the grace of God... He sends his Holy Spirit to live inside of that person so they can do God's will. And that person is now part of God's kingdom. Because new life in God's kingdom is much more than going to heaven when we die. It's worth far much more than that. Although that part is amazing. Kingdom life is here now. It's available to us now. It's knowing the Father. It's knowing the King. It's listening to His voice. It's having His peace and His joy and His love and His power. It's the best life possible. Jesus said, I have come so that they could have life and that they could have life more abundantly. I mean, Jesus compared the kingdom of God to hidden treasure. The kingdom of God is the treasure. The kingdom of God is far more valuable than anything in this world. You can't compare anything with it. I want to shift focus here for a minute here because do you know that there are treasures that God wants to give you in your relationship with him? I believe there are treasures. Now, I also know that there is an enemy who wants to steal that treasure. 
who wants you to not be able to find that treasure. Let me show you this scripture, um, Luke 12, 33 to 34. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. This will store up treasure for you in heaven. And the purses of heaven will never get old or never develop holes. Your treasure will be safe. No thief can steal it and no moth can destroy it. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. And this verse comes right after Jesus tells the people not to worry about all the things that they need, but in, rather to trust in God. And God was revealing that his treasure is people, souls. And this needs to be our treasure too. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is the treasure, and we need to freely give this to his people. You know, Matthew 6, 19 to 21 says, Don't store up treasures here on earth, where moths eat them and rust destroys them, and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Very similar to the other one I just shared. And Jesus reveals something interesting in both of these texts. Wherever your treasure is, there is the desire of your heart. Jesus is exposing something in us. What is in your heart? What are the desires of your heart? Are they earthly treasures? Or are they kingdom treasures? Interesting thought. Actually, let me read something to you. James 5, 1 to 6. He says, look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all the terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away. And your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver are corroded. The very wealth you are counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This corroded treasure you have hoarded will testify against you on the day of judgment. For listen, hear the cries of the field workers whom you have cheated their pay. The cries of those who harvest your fields have reached the ears of the Lord of heaven's armies. You have spent your years on earth in luxury, satisfying your every desire. You have fattened yourselves for the day of slaughter. You have condemned and killed innocent people who do not resist, resist you. What if God asked you to give up your home to someone else? Now, I know this is not what we're talking about, really, but... Would you trust him if he asked you to do that? We have such a tight grip on the things of this world, don't we? We have such a tight grip on the things that we don't want to lose. But I wonder what life would look like if we loosened our grip on the things that we want and start desiring the things that God wants. I've wondered sometimes, you know, I, I'm going to tell you a story. This happened to me. Um, wow. Probably 19, uh, late nineties. We'll just say that I'm living in Lethbridge and I'm, you know, I'm praying, I'm praying every day and I'm spending time in the Lord every day. And I was working at the Miracle Channel. And I 
remember God saying to me. Because I would say, God, I want to be free. I want to be more free than I've ever been before. There's these things that I'm struggling with and I don't want to struggle with them anymore. And I want to be better and I want to be closer to you. Holy Spirit says this. Get rid of your TV. <laughs> Just get rid of it. And also get rid of the... I had a video game console. I can't even remember what it was. Probably like a Sega Genesis or something like that. Get rid of it. <laughs> and I thought, God, uh, you know what? And he says, you know, like, get rid of it. Don't watch anything. Get it out of your life. You know what I did? I'd like to tell you that it was really spiritual and that I, I did exactly that. I didn't. Not at first. I tried to negotiate with God. I said, okay, hang on a second. How about this? How about I don't watch any television past 11 o'clock? No, get rid of it. Okay, now I got it. I said, God, check this out. I will only watch Christian television we had the miracle channel and i said and that'll be the only thing that i watch and you know what i felt him say he says okay but you'll never be free <laughs> when i heard those words i got rid of my tv i don't remember what i did I think I took the game console and I actually put it in the garbage. And the TV, I don't know, I might have given it away or just put it away or whatever, but that was a long time ago. But I remember, you can't negotiate with God. You just listen and obey. It goes much better. But I learned a really valuable lesson that day. I have to be able to trust him in all the things because he knows what's best for me and you know these treasures that we're speaking of we're, uh, I mentioned that they're people and they are but there's also other treasures that you can get there's treasures when you you know like when you go looking for something if you get a map right if somebody gives you a map and says hey th there's you follow these instructions on this map it will lead you to this location and, and, and there X marks the spot you dig and you find your treasure well the word of God is like the treasure map and you follow the, the word of God and and God does things for you and you find treasure you find greater intimacy with him in fact God says I only share the secrets of my heart with those who fear me those who obey me in fact, Jesus says in John chapter, I think it's 14 or 15, I believe it's 15, where he talks about the vine and the branches. And he says in that same, somewhere in that area, I don't have it in front of me. Um, he says, I, the person who loves my God, who loves my father and loves me and obeys me, God will live with you. He will come in, he will dine with you, he will live with you. And he says, and I will reveal myself to you. And this is the same chapter that's talking about the promise of the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, I will give you the Holy Spirit. I will live with you. I will share my love with you. And I will reveal myself to you. But only to those who obey me. You see, there are treasures there's intimacy treasures. There's secrets on God's heart that he wants to tell you that you will never know if you don't take the time to search for them. Like a treasure map, it leads you to the place where X marks the spot to get the treasure. But guess what? If you have a treasure map and you say you just put it away and say, I'll, I'll get that treasure another day. I'll, you know, I, I don't feel like doing it today. 
or I don't believe it. I've seen other treasure maps and, they, you know, it's nothing. Well, then you're going to have nothing. And you're going to go through your life with nothing. You're going to have a basic Christian experience where you just say you love God and everything else, but you don't have those moments. You don't have those treasures. You don't have those breakthroughs. You don't have God speaking to you. You don't have those dreams and visions from God because God, you know, God doesn't play favorites, but I can tell you this. He reserves the secrets and the treasures for those who fear him. I want more of those things. But you've got to pay a price to get them. Now some people say, well, that's just works. And you, you're talking about all these nonsense Pentecostal things. No, I'm not. Look at the word of God. It's very clear. He says, when you search for him like gold or silver, it says, then you will find him. So it's up to you. Do you want to find these treasures? Or do you want to just go living life the way you've always have and just be satisfied with whatever you get? Let me close with one last thing. I believe that there are treasures. Not only treasures, but there are promises. There are things that belong to you that you have authority to receive that are just waiting for you. They have your name on it. Gifts, treasures that have your name on it. But you think that in, in our mentality, we think, you know, I'm not good enough. Or I haven't done enough. I haven't this kind of stuff. You got to remember, these are things that God has already accomplished on the cross. They're finished. They're done. And the Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. God is a good father. He wants you to enjoy his blessing. He wants you to receive these treasures. The ultimate treasure is the ones that last for eternity. The people that we bring into eternity. The, the treasures that we have, like the intimacy that we have with the Father. Those are eternal. So let's pray today. Lord, we thank you for the hidden treasures that you have made available to us. Because you're such an amazing father, you've made available to us so many awesome and great things. But I know that we need to set aside ourselves to really seek for you. Because God, it's not about just receiving the treasure, it's about receiving you. Because that's the adventure. That when we're searching for treasure, we find you. We find more of your intimacy, more of your secrets, more of your blessing. And these are all because it's part of you. And we pray that we wouldn't hold these treasures to ourselves, but that we would deliver the good news to those who need it today. Because the greatest treasure is salvation. And we pray in Jesus' name today, God, give us new strength to go looking for the treasure and finding it and building your kingdom, establishing your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And we give you the praise and the thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, click the notification button, and next week, we'll have a brand new message. See you then.